Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host Poobarama and in today's video I will be going over the Cayo Perico heist, which setups you should and should not be doing and how to do them most efficiently. When starting up the heist, the first thing you're going to need to do after gathering intel is deciding what your approach vehicle is going to be. Now I have 5 out of these 6 options unlocked. Honestly, you don't need any of these options apart from the Kosatka or the Longfin. Now personally, I like the Longfin a lot more. I used to like the Kosatka more, however the Kosatka is really only good if you have 2 players because you can grab all the targets in the main compound where El Rubio is and leave. It's a lot simpler. However, if you're a solo player like myself, it's easier to use the long fin to make it across long distances and grab these secondary targets unless there are two paintings inside the main office, then I'd go for the Kosatka because it's a shorter and easier distance to go. However, we're starting off with the Longfin because that is the one that the majority of times you're going to be using. Now, when it comes to what vehicle you're going to use as transportation for all of these setups, I like to use the Sparrow. The Sparrow is great. It's super fast, flies at 160 miles per hour as long as you're a high enough altitude that it doesn't crash in anything. Sparrow has unlimited missiles and it is incredibly fast to spawn in next to you. Even if it gets blown up, you don't need to pay MMI anything. And the best part of them all is that the Sparrow is incredibly quick to get back. Only a two minute cooldown. Overall, I really like it. If your Oppressor Mark II gets destroyed for some reason, it's a five minute cooldown. And I also should point out that the Oppressor Mark II does not carry unlimited missiles and you gotta pay for it if it's your reason it does get blown up. So with those reasons, I personally just like the Sparrow. It might take you like one or two minutes longer to finish the missions with the Sparrow, but it is still very, very easy to do. Now we're making our way straight over to the Vespucci police station, which we can see is in front of us. Now what's going to happen is when we make it to that police station, we're going to get a call from Pavel telling us we need a trailer to pick up the boat. And there's two options you have. The first option is to pick up the one of the trailers or one of the trucks to pick up the trailer. The other option is to call in a phantom wedge. Now, if you own a phantom wedge like myself, it's very easy to do that, and it's not a bad investment. However, if you don't want to waste the, like, $2.5 million it is to get one, then, yeah, I wouldn't really suggest to buy a phantom wedge. It's only going to save you, like, one or two minutes each source as it is. So, we can see there are trucks on the map. We've got one all the way at the bottom, which is a phantom wedge, and then we just got two normal trucks off towards the side. Now, Personally, I like getting the normal trucks better. I know a lot of people like getting the Phantom Wedge, but you have to kill a bunch of people, which honestly just wastes a bunch of time. I think it's a lot easier just to grab yourself the normal Phantom. There's two of them, and you can pick which one you think is prettier, but as well, it does the same job. I mean, sure, you can't run into the police, but the method we're going to do anyway, you shouldn't be dealing with police as it is, so you'll see. It's pretty dang easy. So we've made our way over to this location, and we're just going to land our helicopter. There's literally like two guards we have to kill and that's about it. I don't even know if the guys have guns half the time. Oh god, my helicopter is all wonky. But there you go. Land my helicopter. And we're literally just going to get in the wedge. Or not the wedge, but we're just going to get in the phantom and that's it. I mean, it's pretty dang easy to do this. We got one guy that shoots at us and uh, there you go. He's gone. So that's just how easy it is to get the truck. When you make it to the police station, which we have here, all you're going to do is reverse the truck in. You're going to get cops as soon as you get near the police. So all you're going to do is very simply like this, reverse into the police station and drive right into the trailer. There you go. Now that I've got the trailer, we're going to get out of the police station and drive. I like to do it maybe about, I don't know, two, three hundred feet away. We're going to drive right up here. Now at this point, you just got to kill yourself. Now the game doesn't allow you to die from the interaction menu. So what I do is I grab myself a sticky bomb and rah, there you go. I am now dead. What happens when you kill yourself is you lose the cops. You're going to notice that right now. As you can see, we have no cops, but the trailer is still right in front of us and we have the long fin on it. So that's how easy it is to complete this first part. And this is why you do not need a phantom wedge. Sure, it's easier to smash people off the road and stuff like that, but you don't need it. It's a little bit more effort to grab the phantom wedge. Plus, that's it. Now we just have to deliver the long fin to the docks, which is a 1.8 mile drive. And 
that is the first setup complete. So a very, very easy setup mission overall. This is definitely one of the quickest ones, which is nice because it's also the best vehicle to use for completing the heist. All right, we have made it to our destination, and all we got to do is deliver the boats. Now, you can also crash through the fence. I was just kind of lazy and went through the gate there, but either way, it's pretty fast. Once you deliver the long fin, it's very, very easy as well. All you're going to make sure is that your spawn location is set to the Kosatka, and we're just going to wait for the delivered thing. As you're going to notice, if I go to my spawn location, it's set to the Kosatka. So what happens is I'm going to go to online, I'm going to go to find new session, invite only, and it's going to spawn my Kosatka right where I currently am at. And there you go, I'm spawning inside the Kosatka. This not only saves you a lot of time to start up the next setup, but it's pretty dang easy. So let's make our way back up to the communications table and start up the next session. Setup. Now, I should point out that there are two different setups you can actually get. For example, if you get the Bearer Bonds heist, you do not need to get the Plasma Cutter, where you do need to do that if you do uh, get, for example, the Ruby Necklace, which I have. So that is one thing to point out, but the Bearer Bonds is very, very easy. When it comes to equipment, we're going to start off with the Plasma Cutter, make our way down to the Fingerprint Cloner, and finish off with the Cutting Torch. Plasma Cutter is very, very easy to do. And once again, because we've loaded into a new session, I don't even need to despawn my sparrow. It's going to spawn right into the back of my Kosatka once again. So we just run to the back of the Kosatka. You can see my sparrow right here. Beautiful as ever. And we're going to fly over to the safe house. All right. We have made it to the safe house. It's a pretty easy flight. And once you make it here, you're just going to land your helicopter or your oppressor. This is a, a pretty easy part of the mission. Honestly, this is probably the easiest part of any setup mission. All you're going to do is land your vehicle and run into the door. You don't need to worry about security cameras or anything like that, even though you can see them up here. It doesn't make a difference because there's nobody in here that's going to attack you. We can see that there is no planning board on this side, so we can see it right over towards the other side. So all I'm going to do is walk about two feet out and go onto my phone, take a picture of the planning board, done, and send to Pavel. Now we're just going to walk right back outside, and that is complete. Very, very easy to do, and that's the first part. Now we're just going to get back into our helicopter and fly over towards the center of the city, which is where the next part is going to be. And we've made it to the next part of the setup. Now, I should point out that this is actually a bit tricky. Whether you're using an oppressor or you're using a sparrow like myself, you do have to be a little careful here. The way I like to do this is I'm going to park my sparrow, specifically flying towards the ocean. And then we're going to leave the door open and run away so my character doesn't close the door. We're going to go to my interaction menu, go to vehicles, and call in a Vapid Speedo Custom. Now, if you don't own a Vapid Speedo Custom, just get out any armored vehicle. If you own an armored Karuma, it will also get the job. Job done. We're going to get into the Vapid Speedo Custom, and all I'm going to do is mow, mow down everybody with the gun. And it's, that's basically it. I mean, it's pretty dang simple. We're just going to steal the Plasma Cutter as it is. Now, we're not going to enter from the front. We're going to go around this way. That way, I can just drive through and get it. So, here we go. Let's just get these guys. Hello! How you doing? Oh, I didn't realize I couldn't hit those guys. I was wondering why I wasn't letting me shoot, but let's just clear all this. There you go. Blow that up. Blow that up. And... Should be able to get the plasma cutter, which we did. Goodbye. Oh, there you are. And goodbye. And as you can see, that was pretty dang simple. Now, unfortunately, it appears that I'm actually... Uh, oh, there you go. I was going to say I was stuck there, but we're not. So, now we're just going to get that checkpoint and make our way over to the side of the Sparrow. And once again, very, very easy. You just get inside of the Sparrow at this point. And because I have faced the helicopter away where the guys are going to come from, as I said... There you go. Done. So, once again, a very, very easy setup, as you can see. You get in your Sparrow, and you leave. You don't need the Vapid Speedo Custom. You can do that in an Armored Karuma. You can do that in probably a Duco Death, which I'm pretty sure anybody can get for free at this point. I personally just like to do it in the... Uh, I like to do it in the Speedo because it's super easy to call in. And by the way, one of the really nice things about the Sparrow is that it does not take up a vehicle slot on the road. If you have an Oppressor Mark II, you're going to be using that vehicle or you're going to have to wait a five minute cooldown period to get it back. But 
Either way, that's how simple this mission is. Now, you cannot go into invite only and go into a new lobby to finish this one, unfortunately, because you actually have to deliver the plasma cutter to the Kosatka. So do keep that in mind. Don't load into a new lobby unless you want to have to restart the setup. But once you've made your way back to the Kosatka, pretty simple and done. We land back in. Another great thing about the Sparrow is that you can just instantly land back in your Kosatka rather than landing the oppressor on the top and then going down into the bottom. So I just think the Sparrow is great for a lot of reasons. But here we are, heist prep complete. That's already two parts of this done. There's a couple left we have to do. The next one we're gonna do is one that a lot of people do last, but I actually like to do it at the beginning just because of how annoying it can be. And this is the weapons source. If we make our way back to prep, you're gonna see weapons loadout. Now the first thing you want is suppressors. You are gonna purchase these for 5,000. It's very, very cheap and it gets the job done every time. Now, whatever weapon loadout you you want is up to your personal choice. I like Crackshot because the AP pistol gets the job done for the majority of people that you need close and if you want to shoot people far away up on the towers or anything like that, you can also do that with the snipers. I personally like crack shot. I'm gonna start it up and you'll notice how it says go to the Penrith building. Now we got very lucky. Sometimes it's gonna make you tail a Meriwether helicopter. If you get that prompt, all you're gonna do is press start, go to online and find a new session and then go right back into your Kosatka because you've set your spawn location to the Kosatka and go back up to the planning board and start the setup again. If you keep getting the Meriwether, just keep on doing it over and over and over until you get one that says enter the building. When you get one that is entering the building, it is very, very easy. All you need to do is, as I said, enter the building and uh, well, you're going to see what we have to do. We have arrived at the building. All you want to do with your helicopter is make sure that you ding a bit of the edge of the building so the little checkpoint goes off. You can see the red at the bottom and you're going to land your vehicle right at the top. This is very easy. You're just going to do it like this. Now, once again, make sure that whatever vehicle you're using is facing away of the building because when you exit, there's going to be helicopters on you. So I like to face a helicopter like this. Once again, leave that door open and we're going to enter the building. Now, you can do this stealthily if you want. Um, it's pretty easy to honestly do it stealthy or you can do it the way I like to, which is pulling out the axe. This is very, very easy because all you need to do is stab this person and there you go. Now we have our special rampage ability. Now you stab this guy and you get more of your ability back and this guy to get more of your ability back and this guy i mean you can see just how easy this is with the stone axe there you go another person and then we run over to you and another person thank you for your arm very very much sir now i'm just gonna run over to you hello goodbye yeah i mean this is incredibly easy and this is why the stone hatchet is by far one of the best weapons in the game he's dead He's dead, and there you go. We have completely finished off this building. There's only one guy left, which honestly is never really much of a threat. He's inside here. You don't need to kill him, but I will just because I can. There you go. Everybody is dead. Very, very easy. Now you're just gonna walk up over here for the gun locker. Sometimes it kind of bugs out while you've got your ability running, so you might want to wait for it to go away. But now we're just gonna rate wait here there you go now you just gotta try and open it and it's gonna say you cannot open this and now we're gonna go over to the laptop and try and hack it now hacking the laptop's pretty easy i mean this one is pretty self-explanatory you're going to look for the numbers at the top of your screen it can take a little while to find it we got to look for 67 54 24 36 so 54 24 are the numbers i am looking for i start at the top which is pretty easy then i just make my way down. I see a 54, a 24, and there you go. Pretty dang easy to do that. If you start at the bottom and then just make your way down, even though they move a little bit, they only jump one over, so it's pretty easy to do it. And that's it. This is how easy it is to get the weapons. Once you grab the weapons, you just gotta fly back to your Kosatka, as usual. So we're just gonna run into the weapons locker. There you go. Steal the weapons and done. So we're just gonna go back to the front. Now you have two options when you get to the exit of this building. You can either exit to the roof or the ground. Obviously, you want to press left on the D-pad and get on the roof. As I said, there's going to be helicopters that spawn. We can see them right off to our side on the minimap. But because of the way I have faced my helicopter, all we need to do is get off the building like so. Almost just flipped it, but 
We're all good. There you go. And completely done. And because we are in the Sparrow, we are super duper fast. And the guards are going to have a very, very hard time keeping up with us. Now, you can actually go to services, Kosatka, and request your Kosatka at this point, And it will spawn over at the Vespucci Beach. It's a much faster location to get to. And you're going to see that it's just going to spawn right here. Very, very nice indeed. I like to do this usually about halfway through doing sources, as long as it's a very close destination to go to. But yeah, this saves you quite a bit of time. As you can see, rather than flying all the way past the Merryweather docks, the Kosatka is going to pop up any second now, so I'm going to start slowing down my helicopter. There she is, and inside we go. Once again, another setup complete. Very, very easy to do, and I mean, that should really explain everything you need to there. The stone hatchet just makes life so easy when it comes to that mission because the guards really never react fast enough until you've already slain one of them. So, another heist prep complete. We've got, what is it, two more to go, and then we've completely finished the setups for the Kaioprico heist. And I mean, this is just how easy it is to do these setups. So, we're gonna make our way back to the planning screen, and we are going to start our next one, which is the fingerprint cloner. And I do wanna point out, you do not need to do demolition charges whatsoever. Even though it says at the bottom, prep mandatory, just ignore it. If you do the other three, you will never have to do the demolitions, ever. It is pointless because it always gets the guards mad at you. So whatever you do, do not go for demolitions. Once again, we make our way into the Sparrow and to our location. The fingerprint cloner is probably the easiest setup. I mean, the cutting torch is really easy too, but fingerprint cloner, as long as you do it right, is super, super easy. You're gonna see there's two cameras right here. It does not matter if you get these cameras mad because all you're gonna do is pull out your shotgun or whatever weapon you're gonna use before you enter the building and then just spray your shotgun. And as you can see, all the guys are dead. There you go. Congrats. That's how easy it is to finish this first part. It might be a little tricky because some of these guys do carry, as you can see, like this guy does have, I think that is also another assault shotgun, but for the most part, you don't need to worry. Just shoot them. They all die. And now you just have to wait for Pavel to go blah, blah, blah. And then the computer is going to turn on it. There you go. We can start hacking the laptop. Just have to wait a little bit. And this is one of the easiest hacks in the game. You just got to match the letters up. So Panthers. Oh, yeah. I thought for a second I didn't get that last one, but we got it. So computer hacked. And now we leave once again. Very easy setup. Now we just got to do the second part of the setup, which is making our way to the location. You can see it on the map. All we're going to do is fly over to that spot, run in really quickly after we take out one of the cameras that's going to see where we enter and take the fingerprint cloner and make our way back into the Kosatka. Make sure when you get to the archive, you don't get in front of the cameras because if you do, it will send a couple guys after you. But it's pretty easy. As long as you go far enough away, you will see the cameras. I don't remember where exactly where they are. There's one. There's one camera gone, and there's the other. There's the other camera gone. That's all you gotta do. It takes about half a second to shoot those cameras off, and then you're just gonna walk into the building. Now, the fingerprint cloner is always going to spawn directly at the back. Even though you think it might be a little tricky to find the fingerprint cloner, it's not. You just walk right to this back desk here, and it's somewhere around here. There you go. Grab the fingerprint cloner. You can grab it from like five feet away anyway, because apparently your character is like Miss Incredible. And once you've done that, you just make your your way uh, back out of the archive and that's it that's the next setup done very easy that's it so i mean once again you can see just how dang easy these setups are fingerprint cloner delivered very simple very easy and now we have one more setup to do which is the cutting torch i always save the cutting torch for last because it is the easiest of all of them and i mean it is really really freaking easy so we make our way to the setup board and we are gonna do prep equipment and cutting torch and that's it now we're just gonna go back to our sparrow head over to the construction site and you'll see just why this is so easy. All right, now that we've made our way to the construction site, you will notice right here, we have a hard hat. All I need to do is wait for that stupid prompt at the top of my screen to go away because it blocks the prompt and there you go, put on the hard hat. And congratulations, I have finished the setup because that's literally all you need to do. Once you're wearing a hard hat, the guards will not attack you, which makes this like one of the easiest setups to do ever. So now we're just going to run around the building and see if we can find which box is the cutting torch. It's not that one. Is it one of the cutting torch boxes over here? Well, I don't see a box, but I guess we'll find one soon. Oh, there's a box. It's not in that one. 
Well, there's another box over here. It's not in that one. They're gonna make it the last one I check. It's always gonna be, oh, no, it's right in here. Perfect, but because we're wearing our trusty hard hat, the guards will never see me take it. Ha ha, oh yeah, oh, I'm stuck. So, that was pretty easy. Now we just have to make our way all the way back up this freaking like, disabled person system here. And we gotta fly back to our Kosaka, and that's it. That's all the setup's done. We've gotten our weapons, we've gotten our setup vehicle, and we've gotten all the mandatory setups to start up the heist. I mean, this is probably 15 minutes of work if you get it down to a rhythm. I'm not exactly sure how long I've been recording, but it's really, really easy to do this. And you can see it takes almost no effort at all. I mean, it's pretty simple. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like this, as always, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. But yeah, there you have it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.